who came and visited me in the kill count room this morning. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a cute little kitty. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I love her so much. Oh, you're so pretty. Are you looking at yourself on the camera? Look at you. Oh my goodness. Oh, she's so good. This is what happens when Molly stays in bed with Mommy, right? You get some daddy-daughter time with Lucy. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe this. She, like, never comes into this room. So this is so great. I just... She, like, walked in five minutes ago. I was like, are you gonna be here in five minutes, Lucy? <laughs> wow, you are just being real nice and cooperative. Because the last few times I had her cameo and kill counts, she did not want to be in here. She, like, just wanted to get out of here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're so pretty. You're such a pretty kitty. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to your weekly horror news and channel update stream. Uh... All right, I'll let you go, baby. Bye. Bye. And the door's cracked open so you can get out, unlike your your idiot little sister who can't can't seem to manage that. Uh, hey, how you doing? Welcome uh, to, to your weekly stream. Well, yeah. Um, Post-Oscars day. The Oscars were last night, so we had... Uh, if, if you watched the Oscars, hope you had a good time. I, w we watched them. It was our first time watching them in a few years, because during the 2010s, we would watch every single Best Picture nominee and then watch the award show, and we kind of fell off, um, I think around 2020, like pandemic or whatever, but this year we did that. We managed to, Lucy, don't eat, don't eat the fake slugs from the Puppet Master to the numbers. All right, Lucy, maybe you should leave. One sec, one sec, sorry. Hey, honey. leeches not not slugs uh yes this year we watched all the best picture nominees and then watched the award show great year for movies great year i liked all but one of the best picture nominees uh really good stuff if you like movies and maybe you're like me and you've been kind of out of watching those for a while watch all the best picture nominees except for maestro and you'll have a good time or at least be very interested in it and if you want to hear more about the oscars the this year's this year this month's patreon podcast will be me chelsea and gressel talking about the show we're going to record that tomorrow and uh it was maestro i didn't like <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's a fucking maestro maestro is exactly what oscar movies is what people think oscar movies are fucking maestro I, but it was also one of the last ones we watched so i was getting scared i was like do i just like everything now have i gotten soft because I've liked every other movie that we've watched so far. And then we watched Maestro and I was like, no. I still dislike some movies. Fuck this movie. <laughs> All the other ones are great though. <laughs> anyway, yes. If you want to hear more of our thoughts on the Oscars, subscribe to our Patreon. I think it's the $5 tier is the extra podcast. Audio only podcast every month. And this month will be Chelsea, me, and Gressel talking about the Oscar ceremony. And so you can hear all about that. We'll probably end up posting that on Wednesday after we record it Tuesday. It wasn't, it's just fucking boring, Madeline. I said, that's just, just fu it's just fucking boring Oscar bait where it's just like, there's no story. It's yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get to the horror news though. So starting off, speaking of awards and award shows, Godzilla Minus One swept the uh, the Japanese Academy Awards, Japan's Academy Awards, took home eight awards, including Best Picture. It did not win Best Director or Best Actor, but it did win Best Screenplay, Best Supporting Actress, Cinematography, Lighting, Art Direction, Sound, Editing. Do they not have an Effects Award? I'm assuming they don't have an Effects Award if it didn't win, uh, but who knows? Because the other... The other thing, because I saw this and I was like, ah, oh, really? The the actor didn't win? And then I was like, wait a minute, I didn't see any of the, of the other nominees. So that sometimes I feel like people have that reaction to Oscars. They're like, oh, that one movie I saw didn't win? What the fuck? And they didn't see the one that won. It's like, no, if you saw the one, no, 
like poor things had a great art direction and costume i know barbie was cool but like poor things no it, it deserved it so yeah uh there was probably very good acting and directing in these other uh nominees for the Jap japan academy awards and then for us americans us u.s centric people who are like yeah that's great for the academy the the japanese academy awards but Godzilla minus one also won a fucking Oscar last night. It won uh, the award for best VFX. And that's the same award that it won at the Dead Meat Horror Awards. So uh, we will be sending Takashi Yamazaki uh, <laughs> his, his prime rib. And he can put that, he can put that proudly right next to his Oscar. And they will have the same weight, I'm sure. But yes, Godzilla, the first Godzilla movie ever to be nominated for an Oscar, let alone win one, and it won the fucking Oscar. Yes, Ben, I was actually going to pull that up. Uh, great time as any to thank Ben Bellevue once again, our social media, no, not social media, our brand manager, of which social media is a component of, and producer Ben Bellevue. He points out that the Godzilla minus one team at the Oscars had the coolest little shoes ah fucking bing but check out these fucking shoes dude they were little godzilla claws they all had them i don't know why i'm not seeing the picture that i saw all over twitter where it was like them lined oh this one yeah they, they all have their all their heels are little godzilla claws which i thought was really cool and then like they were just so adorable they're adorably proud of their work them walking around with their little godzilla toys <laughs> it was so cute so uh it sucked that he got played off while trying to read a speech in english obviously not his first language and he was struggling a bit and they started playing him off which was a little that but uh i think overall the oscar it was a good oscars night i was i was pleased with it Here's some big news there's going to be a halloween tv series if you didn't know that there was a bidding war a little bit between A24 and Miramax, and Miramax and Trancus, Trancus International Films secured the rights, and so they are going to make a Halloween TV series, and guess what? It will be a new timeline. <laughs> I said this on Twitter, I just want a fucking subway map of these timelines, which I think, um, I think someone did. Oh, yeah, Zach did, from Z CZ's World. So, uh yeah we're gonna have a new timeline maybe it'll go off of the original who knows? oops all timelines that's right changeling ways so we'll see what this timeline includes i don't care whatever because you can't really go anywhere with the david gordon green that was kind of its own thing and it closed off and it's done so you know because now we have one two four five uh, we have one two four five six one two h2o resurrection three if you want to count it zombie and then one david gordon green trilogy so this would be if you count three as its own timeline which is kind of cheating it, it'll be six but it'll be the fifth timeline with michael myers <laughs> that's so fucking funny whatever dude <laughs> whatever that's fine i'll watch it people fucking love halloween man all right uh, oh yeah, anyone who liked No One Will Save You, Brian Duffield, the guy who wrote and directed and produced that film, is going to co-write and direct a, a survival thriller called Whale Fall. When this whale fall, it's, um, about a guy who gets eaten by a whale and has to survive for 24 hours before his oxygen runs out. A scuba diver in search of his deceased father's remains, who gets swallowed by an 80-foot, 60-ton sperm whale. <laughs> What was it described as? The Martian meets 127 hours? Okay, sure. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch that, I guess. You know what? I hope I hope that when the credits hit, my name is Jonas Blaze from Weezer. <laughs> that's, that's what I want. Just smash cut to credits. My name is Jonas. That'd be great. Let's do that. The Faceless Lady. I didn't know that there was some VR horror going on, but apparently this is Eli Roth's third. I don't know why this says first of its kind immersive series, but it's from Roth. And, hey, look at that, Crypt TV. I know a lot of people have often wondered what happened to Crypt TV after they, start, after they stopped focusing on their horror shorts on YouTube, which, honestly, it just became 
unsustainable guys with with i've talked about it before in the dead meat is back video about the changes to youtube over the past five years which was when uh sorry the past seven years which was when dead meat and crypt tv really blossomed into um big channels since then youtube's guidelines and restrictions really changed and made it much more difficult to have horror on youtube and so obviously crypt tv couldn't keep doing what they were doing because they were just always getting demonetized and restricted and and whatnot and i know that they've tried various things uh jack davis who is uh the head of crypt tv over there he's, he's a friend of mine and i know that he's always trying new stuff which is really cool i i really respect that hustle and um it looks like they're partnering with eli roth again because eli roth was a i think co-founder of crypt tv and they are making a vr horror that picture looks cool i like people tearing their faces off just like in poltergeist which you can see more of on sundays yesterday's production tales from hell and yeah uh you can read more about the the plot here this is on fangoria and it will be on in meta horizon worlds i don't know anything about vr or vr platforms or stuff so i don't know check that out it looks kind of cool I, I i skimmed through this trailer a little bit it looked uh looked interesting there's a knight there was some face ripping hedge maze sure okay <laughs> i don't know how horror this is but twilight is getting an animated tv's animated series I, the only reason i i wanted to leave this up on the news was because chelsea as a vo artist was just like <sighs> and apparently just all vo artists chelsea said she she's never seen something like this in her time doing vo uh in, in her time doing voice acting so she was just like every voice actors flocking to their reps and trying to get auditions for the twilight tv series adaptation so we'll see how that goes final destination bloodlines guys guys you gotta change the name and craig perry who is what is he is he a producer yes he is producing the sixth final destination and he said in his tweet i know i know pet cemetery bloodlines but dude there's also hellraiser bloodlines wasn't there another one you you can't you can't have your horror movie called bloodlines you can't hellraiser and pet cemetery both just did not do well you gotta change it you gotta change it tremors that's right i knew there was another one tremors bloodlines Wait, Day of the Dead? Is that is that real Rapture City? Was Day of the Dead Bloodlines a real thing? <laughs> you can't do it. Change the name. Anyway, it's Final Destination 6. It will be a, quote, true Final Destination movie, but also one that, quote, doesn't follow that kind of formula that we've kind of established. Okay. Whatever, have it come out, have it hit Blu-ray, let me do a kill count, and let's see those fucking numbers, right? I all love the fucking Final Destination movies. That was a, that was a hit. I think that was, that was the peak of the channel, the Final Destination series, thinking back on it. Because I know that, um, after that, Reanimator had this weird thing where the, the explicit version made the regular version, like, tank. And I remember that the fourth Final Destination kill count got 2 million views in 24 hours, which is unfathomable to me these days in, in this new YouTube uh, reality that we live in. So, yeah, bring out another Final Destination, man. Yeah, you know what? Bring out... We got another Purge coming, right? Let's fucking put them back to back along with Saw 11. Let's just hit those. Back, back, back! Because <laughs> that's what the kids want are the new mainstream movies. That everyone knows about maxine is coming out to theaters on july also every every time i do one of these there's always a comment whether it's in this the chat or on the uh, vod later being like james is so fucking high dog i'm about to go work out after these these are always done right before my workout and also no i'm just <laughs> i'm just tired it's morning 
It's 9 a.m. on a fucking Monday. You think Garfield's always high? No, he's just tired. This is a fucking Monday, man. I'm tired. I'm always tired. I'm always tired. Anyway, Maxine. Coming to theaters this July. Can't wait for this. This will be capping off the trilogy that began with X and continued with the prequel Pearl. Mia Goth starring as Maxine, now taking place in the 80s, jumped forward after the nightmare in Texas that she experienced, and I uh, assume she is working in the adult film industry. I'm assuming this will be kind of a Boogie Nights flavor, and Goth is saying it's the best movie of the three, which I'm sure she would say regardless, but I love both X and Pearl, can't wait for the conclusion to the trilogy you will see that on july 5th which is also chelsea's birthday and uh as far as that lawsuit goes with goth i haven't heard any updates i think i checked it out um i think a week ago i, I googled it to see if there were any updates i don't think there were so we'll just have to wait to hear if anything comes of that but um yeah hopefully hopefully mia goth wasn't abusive as was alleged uh, who knows? That's that's the lawsuit. We'll wait to hear more about it. Um, oh, yeah, The Exorcist. Oh, The Exorcist. I've been watching The Exorcist and the first three Exorcist films uh, since they are the next series on the Kill Count after the Hannibal series, so I've been spending a lot of time with this franchise, yet I still haven't seen Believer. Um, not enough people saw it, I guess. It, it did not do as well financially as Blumhouse and Universal hoped. Definitely didn't do as well critically because uh, it was kind of, I know that it was really panned when it came out. A lot of people did not like it. Maybe that was because they didn't like David Gordon Green's Halloween Ends, which was also controversial, but I know I, I didn't hear a lot of great things about this and uh, that's gotta be a bummer for the studio since they paid $400 million for the franchise rights to make a trilogy. That they gotta stop planning trilogies off the like right off the bat, man. I mean, that was one of the issues with Halloween Kills was Halloween 2018 fucking ruled, and then they were like, now it's gonna be a trilogy. We're gonna have two more movies. So that middle one, you can just ignore it, basically. And it's it's just a bummer. Well, just make a movie one at a time. Someone had a really good acceptance speech. Oh, the writer of American fiction last night the Oscars was like it, it was his first time directing that film or a film and his movie was nominated for best picture and he said I know it's a risk to let a first time director make a movie but it's also a risk to Cord Jefferson thank you apt uh, very good to get his name Cord Jefferson who wrote and directed American fiction which I really enjoyed it was very funny uh he said I know it's a risk to let some a new person make a movie that they've they've never made a movie before but it's also a risk to make a 200 million dollar movie why not instead of doing that you make 20 10 million dollar movies you know or 45 million dollar movies and and give these people chances to uh let this new generation of filmmakers get some practice or just you know make good movies you can make such good movies for 10 or 5 or less and uh, so, I, I don't know, there's something wrong when they're paying $400 million for the rights to a franchise that nobody really asked for more movies of. But, besides you had the TV show, that thing fucking ruled. That TV show was fucking peak Exorcist. Nobody watched it, so there's just not the audience, I guess. Anyway, they gotta make something with these, these <laughs> movies that they bought the rights to. But David Gordon Green will not be directing it. And it probably won't even be related to Exorcist Believer at all. Um, Jason Blum does not know where they're going at this point because I, I don't know. They got to fix it. Uh, this is very industry stuff. Studio Canal is creating a genre label for horror films with Jed Benedict hired to run it. Uh, again, that's that's more for people who make movies, I think. I don't think any of you would be interested in... Yes, there is a new label under this studio that could maybe buy a movie that you might be working on. And finally, Anthony Hopkins is going to star in a reimagining of H.G. Wells's The Island of Dr. Moreau. Remember the Oscars? I didn't watch this Oscar ceremony live, the one I'm about to talk to, but... Uh, one I'm about to talk about, but remember when they ended it with Best Actor because they thought that Chadwick Boseman would win it? Uh, posthumously, but then he didn't win it, and Anthony Hopkins won it, 
and then he wasn't even there because it was too late for this 80 year old man to be awake <laughs> oh man awkward oscar moment awkward and then they just fucking cut the feed they're like all right we're good we're all right thanks everyone all right have a good night just fucking cut it <laughs> oh man he wasn't he, was, he wasn't even there <laughs> oh god okay that's all i got that's all i got for news we got a couple of trailers though so let's see what these are don't make don't make plans like that if you don't know for sure what's gonna happen guys okay arcadian what is this oh it's got nick cage he was at the Oscars. He presented an award. Um, okay. Normal life on Earth has been decimated in the near future. Great! There are those who believe they came after the pollution people caused. And they're here to cleanse the planet of the human race. So we'll all become extinct. We have to stay vigilant. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this guy, the I'll meet you right here before the sun sets behind that hill. It was good to see you. You're late! Sorry, I lost track of time. Are we safe? Yes. Are we secure? Yes. Thank you for this food we are about to receive. Thank you for bringing us together as a family. I like post-apocalyptic stuff. It's always fun to imagine yourself in a scenario. Not fun. But... I don't want to hide from them anymore. What do we do? Creatures? Are we not men? Whoa, what is that little creature? What are they doing? They trapped us in. They're curling up from underneath us. So break in any second. You need to trust me. What are, what are those little furry guys? What are we looking at there? What are we doing here? You need to trust me. Oh, damn it, just missed it. Yeah, I can't tell what I'm looking at here. Are they little critters? This feels kind of a quiet place-esque. Uh... Except instead of being quiet, you have to be back before the streetlights go off. Okay, sure. That that looks like it could be interesting. I don't know if this is based on anything or, or inspired by anything else, but it's Nick Cage. Oh, you can press carrot on the keyboard to go frame by frame. Is that true? Oh, shit. Wow, thank you, Gemino Castillo. Wow. I love it when the chat is is helpful and informative. Thank you. Oh wait, oh that's an arm. That's an arm. This is an arm right here. Th this looks like a monkey. Are these monkeys? Are these apes? Are these monkeys? What's Arcadian? I'm sure I'm too dumb for to know what Arcadian is is referencing or hinting towards. Someone said they're Sasquatches. Maybe. Are they, are, they, are they apes being like, yo, we're we're night owls. We like to sleep during the day, party all night, and y'all humans fucked up the planet. So we're here to fix it. They look like apes for sure. Okay. Infested. Oh. Animals, apes. It all comes off. Oh, nope, spiders. A little bit Let's go. Sorry to anyone with arachnophobia. Oh, that building was cool. Wait, are we getting another spider movie? Didn't we watch a spider trailer a couple weeks ago? Two. 
Gosh, dang. Dude, you lost your spider. You do food when I can. Yeah, I feel like the other. I'm like, am I just watching that other trailer in a different language? <laughs> Wasn't it like an apartment building with a spider? Oh, yeah. Oh, coming out the shower drain is gross. Sting, that's what it was. It's Sting, yeah. Okay, spiders are, yeah, Jordan's right. Spiders are so hot right now. We got Sting, we got Infested, we got Madam Web. Great run of spider movies. Okay, I mean, whatever, it, it didn't look bad, I guess. Was... And then Parasite the Grey, which I believe is made by the creator of Train to Busan. Oh, wow, this has 2 million views. Okay, so you guys probably know about this. Oh, it's based on a uh, anime? Parasitize. Jam. Are they just having a fucking warm head party? Inganyungneru Chalanunda. Tongjogi Manna. Mongajum Tarunde. I'll hand it to him, man. The heads go from human face to butt like that that transition is seamless. So like what posting though. Like obviously, you know, it, it, the, the the worm head itself is very CG looking, which is fine. It looks like good CG, but that, that transition is Yeah, yeah, here, let me use this new new little carrot trick I learned. Like like going from this that's that that looks really good that's impressive wow i can already see that this is going to be one that like i i see lots of fucking requests for in the comments <laughs> cuz it's oh it's a manga not an anime i'm sorry watch the anime okay it's both okay um so there you have it cool that that looks real good all right uh, on to the dead meat news, shall we? Shall we get to it? If you did not see this past week's videos, make sure you check them out. We had Manhunter for the kill count on Friday. As I feared, uh, didn't do baller numbers just because, you know, I'm sure not that many people know about the movie and it's got that scary 1980s something in the title. I often wonder what would have what would have happened had I not put years in the kill count titles. Yeah, we'll we'll never really know. But um, it is one of my favorite movies that I've covered in recent years. Uh, it's it's phenomenal, and I think fans of the film really appreciate the coverage because it's just so goddamn good. So watch the movie and watch the kill count. Um, they're both very good, if I may say so myself. I absolutely love Manhunter. I'm assuming that this week's kill count will do better, The Silence of the Lambs, since it is a better known film. My prediction, though, is that Hannibal will do the best. I, I, this might be a situation where, as the series continues, I think, I think the best performing kill counts of the series will be Hannibal, 
and Red Dragon, maybe. I think th those are my predictions. Because Hannibal is just the name Hannibal, and people will be like, oh, I know that character. Or think it's the show, maybe, and, and click in for that. And then Red Dragon seems like it has a lot of fans. Um, you'll see in that kill count that I don't love it. Uh, it's it's hard for me to judge it compared to Manhunter. But, um, yeah, I, I we'll see how Silence of the Lambs does. I, I hope that it does well. But I think that at this point, it's 33 years old, and it doesn't say the silence of Hannibal. Hannibal's in the thumbnail, though, so maybe that'll that'll make people understand it. But um, I, I, I think people might just not know what it is, which is fucking weird to say, but people might not know what it is. I think Hannibal will do better. And then Hannibal Rising is completely up in the air. Who the fuck knows? That movie fucking sucks. Hannibal Rising fucking blows, dude. My ranking of these movies is one, two, three, four, five. Just in, in, as they come out, I enjoy them less. Except for Silence, I enjoy it just as much as Manhunter. I just personally prefer Manhunter. But uh, then Hannibal is like, okay, that, that's fine. It's not bad. And then Red, Red Dragon, I'm like, eh, not really my thing. And then Hannibal Rising, I'm like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how those go. And then we'll have the Exorcist kill counts after that. Just the first three films. We will not be covering those two prequels that came out in the mid 2000s um what is it like the beginning and dominion the prequel to the exorcist i've never fucking seen those ever manhunter over silence of the lambs is not blasphemy it's a matter of taste harry they're both masterpieces i think that they're both phenomenal and i would never say that manhunter is the better movie i just personally prefer the style of manhunter i think it's fucking chill dude it's fucking i don't know it's vaporwave in movie form, man. It's chill hop. It's got, it's synthy. It's fucking bathed in colored lights. I love it, man. I'll just sit back and watch William Peterson give my favorite performance of the entire franchise as, as Will Graham. Oh, he's so good and tormented. He's so good. I love it. Uh, we also used Manhunter to do two things to the show. One, we brought back Kill Count trailers. They're back, baby. They are going to be included at the end of every kill count as much as we can do. Uh, here's the thing. Kill count trailers are edited and often, not always, written by Zorin. Zorin's got a baby coming out sometime soon. Not if it's not coming out of him. It's coming out of his wife. But he'll still have to tend to the thing after it comes out. Uh, so he'll be gone for like probably a month after that baby comes out on parental leave uh bonding becoming a a father <laughs> transitioning to fatherhood and as with babies uh as they tend to to be it could come out at any time who knows it i think it's scheduled for the end of this month but it it could happen whenever who fucking knows so um if there is an abrupt end to the trailers that's why we could have another editor do them, but uh, I'll tell, I'll be honest with you, all our, all our staff is fucking very busy right now. We also got, it's like, there's a lot going on right now. There's personal things going on for some of our, our crew, unfortunately, and um, another editor, Josh, is moving and has to take, like, five days off to move because he's, he's moving states. So, right now is a lot going on, and it's, it's, also, we have conventions coming up. And so those conventions were usually gone from Thursday to Monday. So that's five days that we can't work. So we have to get the work done ahead of time. Like, I was really hoping that after the awards and production tales from hell and they talk were over that we could get a little bit of a break. That seems to not be the case. Maybe after this year I can sleep. But that would be good. Um, in any case, got Hannibal kill counts with trailers and Exorcist. And the other thing that Manhunter... Uh, brought back or or created new is the new Kill Count logo created by Beth B. Rad, who made the Dead Meat logo way back in the day. And uh, we, we made a new Kill Count logo because the old one was just a free font that we found and typed in the Kill Count and I made the, the word the smaller in size and that's what it's been since 2017. And let's be honest, like, look at that thing. I know you have nostalgia for it. I know that it's been there since the beginning, but like, it's just fucking font. People called it the Angry Birds font. I didn't even realize that until I changed it, that people were saying it was the Angry Birds font. And then I looked up, what's the Angry Birds? Yeah, yeah, kind of looks like it. So, 
I, we definitely needed something proprietary, something unique to us, not just like type in words into a font. Because I'm sick of seeing my fonts in, in cheap horror movies and uh, I'm like commercials for uh, local scares. <laughs> all, all the fonts that I used in the beginning of Dead Meat, I keep seeing in just like generic horror things. And I'm like, hmm. Should probably, uh, should probably have some custom things going on now. <laughs> so the new logo is very cool. And I think the plan for us, as far as that new channel goes, and the conversion uh, of this channel to being just kill counts, I think the plan is for that to happen after the Hannibal series and before the Exorcist series. Because that'll also coincide with the, um seven year anniversary of the first Kill Counts release, which was April 7th, 2017. On April 7th this year, we have Production Tales from Hell, The Exorcist, and I think that that will be the last non-Kill Count video uploaded to uh, this channel. I believe that we're going to rename this channel Dead Meat Kill Counts, and that the new channel... I think we're leaning on Dead Meat Second Slice. I think that that will be the name of the second channel. We will. We haven't verified that. We haven't had any branding made, which we gotta get going if, if that's our launch date. But um, we will have that second channel uh, where for all non-kill count, it, it'll be better. It'll be better for YouTube's algorithm. Trust me, it'll be much better. And Dead Meat Bloodline, <laughs> that's exactly what it should be. <laughs> Dead meat bloodlines for sure, dude. <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be good. Cause anyone who wants to watch all the non-kill count stuff, all you gotta do is, is go to that second channel. You, you just it's it's right there for you. All you gotta do is subscribe and watch it there. And then for the people who don't want to watch the non-kill count stuff, they might be more inclined to catch kill counts and get those in their feeds if all this other stuff isn't coming up. And like I've said before, this second channel, possibly second slice, will give us an opportunity to do other things because right now we are reluctant to do things that don't fall into a standard format or template or series because they tend those videos tend not to do well on, on the channel. If we upload a random interview, it doesn't do well and then that sinks the algorithm, sinks other videos in the algorithm. So I really think that this will be a good decision for everyone involved. People who just watch kill counts, people who watch everything, it'll be good. And I will let you know as soon as that channel's up so we can have all those subs there before. Oh, hey, Veronica. Oh shit, you're still a mod? <laughs> Veronica is our previous assistant. And God, I, you know what, you know what? I bet you're here because I mentioned Garfield earlier. I mentioned Gar Garfield earlier in this chat. Uh, Veronica left us to work on the Garfield movie and worked on it for like two years. Veronica was our, <laughs> yeah, I did. Veronica was our pandemic assistant. We, we hired her literally like weeks before lockdown began. And then she was our assistant all throughout the rest of 2020 and uh, most of 2021. And then really when things started to open up, she was like, hey, I got this Garfield gig. So <laughs> that's when we hired Ben. Uh, and he was our assistant before becoming brand manager, but. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's awesome, Ben. The internet listens. Anyway, Production Tales from Hell premiered yesterday. Our brand new series written and co-hosted by, not co-hosted, written and hosted by Chauncey K. Robinson, produced by MK Vandenberg, our, uh, our amazing producer who made the Dead Meat Horror Awards last year and this year, what they are. And so, great episode. I'm really happy with it. The response has been good. I know that initially we uploaded it with a title that we thought would be more captivating. Um, I'm just, we're just trying to, I'm just still trying to figure out YouTube. Because apparently I don't know what the fuck is going on on this platform. Or what you're supposed to do. Or what audiences want. So, we, we titled it with a more, um a title uh, format that seemed to fit what other people with successful channels are doing. Which legendary director directed Poltergeist? And uh, people didn't like that. So we changed it. We changed it to Poltergeist Production Tales from Hell. Um, I don't know, maybe that's better. Because Ben made the good point that if both the thumbnail and the title both say Poltergeist Production Tales from Hell, 
It doesn't tell you anything about the video or what's going to be covered, but maybe you guys just trust us enough to uh, make it good and, and just, you know, have it as a, a series. I also have seen the feedback about the thumbnail. Apparently, it's too similar to Ryan Hollinger videos. Again, I have said this many times before. I don't watch a lot of YouTube, especially I don't watch horror YouTubers because um, I'm too busy making stuff. The, the YouTube I do watch is like, I'll watch Cody Ko talk about the button. I'll watch Brutal Moose, our, our number one favorite, talk about whatever he wants to talk about. I love that guy. Uh, but we, we don't watch other horror YouTubers Ryan Hollinger included, but a lot of people said that our thumbnail, they, some people said they clicked on it thinking it was a Ryan Hollinger video. And I looked at his channel and he does have the film strip, um, the film reel strip stuff on the, the top and bottom. So our bad, I promise we weren't intentionally trying to rip anyone off by doing that. We were like, the film reel is a part of the production tales from hell aesthetic. So we just tried to, uh, work that into the thumbnail but we might be reconsidering that at this point, so we'll see. Um, but yes, regardless of the title and the thumbnail, I hope you enjoyed the content itself. It's a great show. It looks incredible. It's it's so fun and interesting, and I saw a lot of people call it cozy, which I love that it has that, that people are thinking that about it. it, it they're right. It is cozy. It's a nice little cozy 15-minute mini-doc about horror movies, and so... Uh, we had Poltergeist yesterday, and this Sunday will be <laughs> Troll 2, which I can't wait for you to see. That It'll be such a fun way to cover that that movie uh, with Chauncey. <laughs> it's great. So please check it out. And yes, it does feature the voiceover work of me and Zorin and also Chelsea. Uh, let's say it features the voiceover work of me and voice actors Zorin and Chelsea. <laughs> so check that out. Very fun. Um, was there other stuff about dead meat to be covered? Yeah, uh, Sounds of Lambs, I'm, I'm, I hit the second channel. Um, I haven't said what's after The Exorcist, but that's because that's in 46 days, and you guys don't need to know, or 53 days even. You guys don't need to know that far in advance. I'm sorry, you don't. Live your lives. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so tune in for silence. Um... Oh, and you know what? I, I always see in these... Oh, Josh, with a C in there, interesting, asked any updates on the Dead Meat website. I believe that Ben is shifting his focus to that this week after all the other projects were going on previous to this. So hopefully we get that website up and running. I think the goal is to have it launched in tandem with the second channel. So, you know, we're looking at like less than a month for that. Uh, and the other thing that I always see comments, questions, <laughs> yeah, then I always see questions, comments about um, pregame, you know, the, the film that we posted a teaser trailer of a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah, th that is the horror comedy about football fandom, college football fandom. It's not a football movie, for the love of God. Uh, it is not a football movie. Not a bit of football is played in that movie. It's a very good screenplay it's fantastic it's very funny we um getting a movie made is hard guys uh it doesn't matter if you have six million subscribers on youtube it it does not matter um it, studios don't think that that will convert to views and maybe they're right who knows but it, it's also more difficult when chelsea and i are just the producers of that film we didn't write it we're not directing in it we're acting in it in smaller parts but we're not starring in it so we're just producers. Uh, maybe if we had written it, it would get an easier time getting made, but the writer is a first time screenwriter. The director that we have attached is a first time director. And those are things that studios don't like to take chances on. They don't want to do it. Uh, we got really close. Uh, and I, w I won't say specifics. I just want to give you, because I know that people ask about it and I just want to let you know that, you know, a few weeks ago, we had an in-person pitch meeting that went amazing. Um, we, we during the meeting, we're already talking numbers, availability, and our team left that meeting and got lunch and celebrated the fact that, like, I think this is going to happen. And then it fell through because that's what happens because the, the people we were meeting with amazing people 
they took it back to the rest of their team and they determined that another project that they are making was just a little too similar. It, it had similar themes, similar, a, a little bit of a similar premise, not really, but superficially. And so they couldn't make both. And this other one was already in development. So uh, why is this music all like sad as I'm going through this? Uh, it, it was a really, it, it sucked when that when I got that phone call. Um, the, the person we pitched to had the, the kindness to call me personally and tell me person to person instead of going through reps. But uh, it was a big, big hit to our enthusiasm. But, you know, we're, we're regrouping and we're going to try again with different studios. But this was our, you know, this was our, our number one at the time and, and really hoped that it could happen and thought it would. But so we're back. We're back to pitching it. So I'm sorry. How are we financing the movie? We're trying to go the traditional route. I don't want to crowdsource a movie that feels skeezy. I don't want to ask fans for money to make a movie. You guys have given us enough, and we want the uh, studios to foot it because they'll make them money, you know? So that's where we're at. It's it's a ready-to-make movie. It is a fucking great script. It has pre-production done. It is ready to go. We just need a studio to uh, take a chance with us, but... We'll see. We'll see. All right. That's all I got for you. Thanks for tuning into these. I love starting my week with these. I'll say it every time. And uh, I guess enjoy... How many more of these do we have? Because it's it's what? Um, one, two, three. I think we only got four more of these left after this on this channel. And then you'll have to subscribe to Second Slice, uh, which might be the name. Might not be. But we're leaning in that direction to get the rest of these. So uh, I'll... I'll I'll keep you informed. I'll keep you updated. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah. Be good people. <laughs>